สู่รายการวิดีโอคอนเฟรนซ์นะคะเซสชันที่6ซึ่งเป็นช่วงห้าตอนหลังของปีนี้นะคะก่อนที่เราจะเริ่มขอเรียนเชิญท่านขวัญแก้วพระชูไทยกล่าวต้อนรับค่ะ Good Good evening to Oregon, Ajahn Wesley. Good morning to Bangkok. Mr. George Wilcox, Associate Professor Narapon, Associate Professor Suchada, the teacher, participants at Bangkok side, Ho Yin, and the audience with join the program by TV broadcasting. Welcome back to the virtual classroom for the second part of. Video conference teacher training series. Today, the American English Institute of University of Oregon will present the first out of five sessions focusing creating a resource-rich classroom to enrich the teaching skill with direct experience and exercise. In April, Eastern Learning Foundation in cooperation with. University of Oregon and the Oregon-based U.S. Thai Distance Learning Organization organized a study trip for the teacher participants who complete the first 10 video conference lecture series last year. Throughout 14-day trip, the teachers attended a workshop at the University of Oregon, visited schools, the community college, home school. Home source, museum, library, as well as meeting with school teachers, school district superintendents, and others, to follow His Majesty the King's suggestion on improving science and math teaching. Since last year, Distant Learning Foundation have worked with the University of Oregon for a training program for the teachers in those fields. In February, Professor Russell Tomlin, who is in charge of this project, led the group of three professors in chemistry, physics, and mathematics, and of course our Ajahn Leslie of Beckman to visit Wang Kaigongbun School and Distant Learning Division Station in Hua Hin has been working to design curriculum video conference with online learning resources in Thailand. This mission is supported by the two facilities from Chulalongkorn University, namely the Language Institute, Thailand. The mission is supported by the two fa faculties from Chulalongkorn University, namely the Language Institute and his Faculty of Sciences. The science project will be going on a crucial step when the University of Oregon invites two teachers from Thailand. To participate in the green chemistry workshop from July 14 to 21 on the university campus. During that time, in the morning of July 17, Her Royal Highness Princess Pajarakidiyapa will graciously give a speech via video conferencing from the University of Oregon to the TOT meeting room here and Wang Kai Kangwon School to officially mark the opening of a uh, science program. It is time to start the first session of the second part video conference. Thank you. Yes, over to you, Mr. Josh Wilcox, please. Uh, thank you, and I just wanted to uh, welcome everyone uh, on behalf of the U.S. Embassy. US Embassy. Uh, Welcome all teachers that are listening in and taking part in this uh, video conference. And um, I wanted to point out two upcoming uh, developments related to the five-part series on project-based learning that we just finished, and also on this beginning series on enriching the classroom with uh, reading materials, etc. Um, in January, it looks like we will be able to bring to Thailand for the Thai TESOL conference and for other possibilities outside the Thai TESOL conference, uh, one expert in project-based learning, uh, Frederica Stoller, and uh, another expert in the teaching of reading, uh, 
Bill Grabe, both of them from uh, the University of Arizona. So I wanted everybody listening in to be thinking about that and thinking of ways to take advantage of their expertise when they come in January. Again, welcome to everybody and thank you, Kung Kwang Kao, Leslie, and uh, Ajahn Narapon for uh, allowing the U.S. Embassy to take part in this. Thank you very much, Kung George Wilcox. Um, welcome back to the video conference sessions for English language teachers in Thailand. And as you have already known that uh, our five sessions in part one on project-based learning have just been completed uh, two months ago. And we now start the second part of the sessions, which will be five uh, sessions on creating a resource-rich classroom. And so I would like to welcome our uh, guest lecturer who has been helping up us uh, with this project for quite a long time, Professor Leslie Obbeckman, who is a senior instructor in the MA Language Teaching Specialization Program for the Linguistics Department at the University of Oregon. Leslie, please. All right, thank you. Um, before I begin, let me just say we're, we're keeping an eye on the technical um, situation from this side. I'm still having a really hard time both seeing and hearing you. So um, let's plan at this point to just watch it and see what happens. Thank you very much to those warm words of welcome from Tan Kwan Kao and Kun George. I'm very happy to be back and thankful to be working with our dear partners at the U.S. Embassy, at the Royal Thai Distance Learning Foundation, at TOT Communications, uh, Chula Longhorn University, and colleagues from Thai TESOL, as well as the Ministry of Education in Thailand. It's, it's quite a team. It takes us all to get to this point. As our previous speakers mentioned, we're here today to launch a second set of five sessions. These sessions are intended to have both a pedagogical and a very practical focus on creating a resource-rich classroom. Resource-rich classroom. I'm really thr thrilled to hear that you'll have an opportunity to work with both Frederica Stoller and Bill Grabe in January. As, as Kun George just mentioned, they're leaders in their field, both on project-based learning and on some of the topics that we'll touch on related to literacy. So you'll have opportunities to stretch this out well into next year as, as well. What are we going to talk about today? What we'll talk about um, are just a few brief opening remarks and overview, and we're well into that already. I'd like to stick to our previous type of format with a couple of activities. So we'll do a kind of materials inventory for our first activity. I'll follow up with a series of demonstration items. We'll do a second activity on brainstorming. The second activity is intended to prepare us for the coming sessions. Then if there's time, we'll do a short second demonstration. And if there's really time, we'll do some questions and answers at the end. Um, as always, I invite you to speak up and ask questions and move around the room during our activity times and let me know what's working for you and if there are things that we need to change. I see a lot of beautiful yellow t-shirts in the audience today. Do the yellow t-shirts have special significance? Yes, indeed. Yeah, we wear uh, our outfit in yellow just to celebrate the king's 60th year accession to the throne. Yeah, which will, you know, we oh, will Oh, I must it. find some yellow then. Yeah. Yeah, oh, next time. Okay. Yeah, next time. Well, next time I, I feel compelled to wear yellow then. I will look for some, some good yellow. Thank you for teaching okay. me that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Let's talk first about the, a definition for literacy. It's a very a fluid kind of concept. If we look at commonly held resources or known resources such as Wikipedia, we see that the traditional definition includes the ability to read, write, listen, and speak in whatever the target language is. In addition, some definitions of literacy include notions around numeracy, so numbers, uh, more recently around the, the notion of information technology literacy or visual and or visual literacy. So those are the um, kinds of concepts that we're working with when we talk about literacy. 
the idea of literacy is really key to what we're going to be working with over these first, these next five sessions because the resources that we're looking to collect and to build in our classrooms as sets tie directly into this concept of, of fostering and developing literacy in an interesting way. Ajar Nadapurn, are we translating tonight? Would you like me to pause? Yeah, please, yeah. Uh, just let me know when you pause and then I'll do it. Yeah. You want to do you want me to pause now? now or do you want me to okay. keep going? Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, sure, let's do it between slides. อือค่ะวันนี้อาจารย์เลสลีก็จะพูดถึงพูดถึงได้พูดถึงเอ่อคําจํากัดความของคําว่าOkay, great. Um, so as part of the overview, let's also talk a, lot, a little bit about um, the concept of literacy and the importance of students having a lot of exposure to materials. This is very key to what we're going to be working with over the next five sessions. So why do we want to get more resources into our classrooms? Um, it's not just because it's fun to have them, which it is. Um, what we know from research is that the more exposure we can give our students to reading, to listening, to writing kinds of activities, both direct and indirectly, the more their development in the language is going to improve. And when we say exposure, we're not talking just about uh, your traditional textbooks. We're talking about what's on the walls, what's on the ceilings, what may be on your window shutters, We'll be looking at some examples of that, but really trying to surround your students to give them this feeling that they're swimming in English at all times, that they're being constantly exposed to it. They may not be directly interacting with it. Um, they may be more or less directly interacting with it at different times, but that they have lots and lots of exposure of different kinds of language as frequently as possible. It's important to offer our learners opportunities to engage with materials through reading, through writing, through listening, on a wide variety of, of levels as well, things that interest them. And as we discussed in our previous project-based learning sessions, we can often guess at what interests them, but we also know that it's beneficial to ask them. And so you may give learners opportunities to give you ideas about what they'd like to have in the classroom and even to bring in those kinds of materials themselves. They're often very resourceful at rounding up things from out in the community and bringing them in to share with their other students in the class. When we talk about exposure, we're talking about different genres of language. Um, so we think in terms of traditional genres such as uh, fiction and nonfiction. Um, we can also think in terms of things like uh, comics, um, collages, materials that students have generated, um, mixed media kinds of materials. And so we'll be looking at examples for that and brainstorming some ideas from your side as well tonight or this morning as, as it is on your side. It's important that the materials in the classroom are regularly updated. If, for example, you have uh, 50 sets of resources and you have 10 weeks in the term, You'll, you'll be more likely to keep your students' interest and keep them engaged with the materials if you only put out, say, 10 at a time. So 10 every five weeks. You keep the materials fresh and interesting and stimulating for them. You also can ask them periodically uh, for feedback on what they're enjoying. And this could be orally, it could be in writing, you could have a message box in the classroom. There are a lot of ways that you could do that. But Try to gauge what seems to be working and what doesn't so that you can act upon the things that are working and bring more of that into the classroom as needed. Do you want to do a quick translation here, Nara yes. Porn, or should I go on? Uh, yeah, okay. thank you. อาจารย์เลสลีก็พูดถึงความสําคัญของการที่จะให้เด็กได้เอ่อ expose กับภาษาให้มากขึ้นนะคะก็เนื่องจากว่า
คือไม่ใช่เฉพาะว่ามีหนังสือเรียนให้เด็กนะคะซึ่งอันนั้นเป็น direct exposure นะคะแต่ indirect exposure เนี่ยในรูปแบบอื่นๆเนี่ยที่เป็นภาษาอังกฤษเนี่ยถ้าเผื่อว่าให้ได้แวดล้อมตัวเด็กนะคะให้มาเด็กได้เห็นตลอดเวลาเนี่ยก็จะช่วยในการเรียนรู้ภาษามากขึ้นนะคะแล้วก็อาจารย์บอกว่านอกจากนั้นแล้วเนี่ยเราก็ควรจะหา resources เนี่ยซึ่งเด็กสนใจด้วยซึ่งอันนี้เนี่ยไม่ใช่ครูสนใจอย่างเดียวอาจารย์เลสลี่บอกว่าถามเด็กนะคะว่าเขาสนใจอะไรแล้วก็เขาโอกาสที่ถ้ามี resources แหล่งที่มีตัวภาษาให้เขาเห็นเยอะๆจากหลากหลายแหล่งเนี่ยก็จะมีลักษณะภาษาซึ่งต่างๆกันนะคะไม่เหมือนกับในคอร์สบุ๊กนะคะอย่างอาจารย์ยกตัวอย่างเนี่ยเป็นพวกเรื่องเล่านะคะ non fiction เรื่องจริง fiction อะไรอย่างนั้น fiction non fiction นะคะเรื่องจริงเรื่องเล่าแล้วก็อาจจะเป็นพวกคอมิกส์นะที่มากับการ์ตูนพวก news headlines ก็ได้ก็เป็นภาษาอีกลักษณะต่างๆแล้วก็เป็นประโยชน์ก็คือว่าการที่หา resource ใหม่ๆตลอดเวลาเนี่ยก็เป็นการอัปเดตนะคะ material ของเรานะคะให้ fresh อยู่ตลอดเวลาให้ทันสมัยแล้วก็ใหนักเรียนนี้รู้สึกสนใจอยู่ตลอดเวลานะคะแล้วก็มีการนักเรียนก็ให้ฟีดแบ็เราได้นะคะแล้วก็ว่าสนใจอะไรชอบอะไรนะอันนั้นดีไม่ดีค่ะ Over to you Leslie Thank you Great Thank you very much um, In addition to thinking in terms of the, the amount of exposure and how you pace the exposure and what you expose them to you want to factor in the element of choice It's really important that students have choice in the kinds of materials that they use. Students, uh, we know from research who are interested in what they're doing, who are motivated, uh, will be more engaged with the materials. They'll spend more time on task. You'll see better learning outcomes. They'll become actual language users. And they'll enjoy their learning experience more. If these sound like familiar concepts, um, it's because they probably are. Um, these are some of the core tenants that we built the project-based learning experience on in the last five sessions as well. So we'll be revisiting these kinds of concepts and looking at them from this resource and this literacy standpoint, this, this set of sessions. So our goals. Our goals are to make this connection between a literacy-rich classroom and a resource-rich classroom. And what we want to try to do over the next five sessions, uh, we want to try to start recognizing that you will continue this process, hopefully over time, to build resource sets that you can use in your classroom. And we want to anchor the use of those resources to your curriculum and to your learning goals. So they can be fun, they can be interesting, they can have a much wider range um, in type and genre but they still need to be somehow related to what it is you're trying to accomplish with your learning goals with your students and your curriculum. Above all, we want to avoid expensive investments of both time and money. So whenever possible, we'll be looking at ways to build or acquire these resource sets in ways that don't cost us a lot of time and money or save us time over the long run, even if we have to put in some time right now. Okay, yeah. how about a translation pause there? Okay, yeah. Okay, Mr. Leslie, he talked about choice, นะคะในการที่ทำ resource rich classroom นี่นะคะว่านักเรียนเนี่ยก็จะมีความมีส่วนร่วมมากขึ้นนะคะถ้าได้เห็น materials and resource ซึ่งเขาสนใจนะคะแล้วก็จะใช้เวลามากขึ้นในการที่จะฝึกนะคะภาษาผลการเรียนก็จะดียิ่งขึ้นนะคะเพราะว่าเมื่อเขารู้สึก involved มากขึ้นเนี่ยเขาก็จะใช้ภาษาในการทำกิจกรรมนะคะโดยใช้ resource พวกนี้เราก็เป็นผู้ใช้อาจารย์เลสซี่ใช้คำว่า language users นะคะเป็นผู้ใช้ภาษาที่แท้จริงนะคะได้ใช้ภาษาที่ตัวเองชอบจาก resource ที่ตัวเองสนใจนะคะแล้วก็รู้สึก enjoy นะคะกับการเรียนรู้อาจารย์เลสซี่พูดถึง goals นะคะของการที่สร้างบรรยากาศให้เป็น resource rich classroom ว่าจะต้องมาเกี่ยวข้องนะคะมีความสัมพันธ์กับ literacy rich ด้วยนะคะคือไม่ใช่ว่ามี resource เฉยๆแต่ resource นั้นจะต้องเอื้อต่อการเรียนรู้ไ
ภาษาด้วยนะคะแล้วก็สิ่งที่อยากจะให้ทำซึ่งจะเกิดขึ้นในช่วง5เซสชันนี้นะคะก็คืออาจารย์จะน่าจะได้รวบรวมนะคะหา resource sets นะคะมาเพื่อที่มาแชร์กันมาดูกันแล้วก็ resource sets ที่อาจารย์หามานี้นะคะซึ่งอาจารย์เลสลี่จะยกตัวอย่างให้ดูเนี่ยก็น่าจะมีส่วนที่เกี่ยวข้องกับเคอร์ริคูลัมนะหลักสูตรนะคะหรือว่าเ,เขาเรียกอะไรคะบทเรียนและเส้นแพลนของอาจารย์ด้วยนะเพื่อที่จะประโยชน์ในการใช้จริงแล้วอีกอย่างหนึ่งนะคะก็คือว่าการหาเรซอร์ซี่ขออย่างหนึ่งว่าไม่ไม่ต้องการให้สิ้นเปลืองเงินนะคะไม่ใช่ว่าเราต้องไปซื้อมาอาจารย์ไปหาดูอะไรที่อาจาอาจะไม่ได้ใช้หรือว่าอาจจะขอมาได้นะคะแบ่งปันกันได้แล้วก็ไม่ต้องเสียเวลามากค่ะ Yes over to you Leslie Thank you Okay, great. And this brings us to our first activity. Let's take about five or ten minutes and uh, get into groups. You can work with somebody you've worked with before, or you can work with a new colleague. And just take one piece of paper, and please make a list of all the current resources that you have available for use in your classrooms. Um, you can include um, your regular texts and things that are part of your regular curriculum, but you can also include things that uh, you may have on your walls, on your ceilings, um, that you keep in bins, um, sort of whatever comes to mind. And the second part of this task is the question, which of these items are out in your classroom right now for student use? Is this clear? Okay. กิจกรรมนะคะอาจารย์เลสลี่กิจกรรมแรกอยากจะให้อาจารย์ลองคุยกันดูนะคะในกลุ่มสองสามคนนะคะว่าอาจารย์ลองทำลิสต์มาว่าในในมีแมทเชียลที่เกี่ยวกับฝึกให้นักเรียนได้ฝึกทักษะการอ่านและการเขียนอะไรบ้างที่มีอยู่ที่อาจารย์มีอยู่นะคะในคลาสนะคะแล้วปัจจุบันนี้อาจารย์นำชิ้นไหนมาให้นักเรียนใช้นะคะอันนี้อาจจะไม่ใช่เฉพาะหนังสืออาจารย์เลสซี่บอกว่าอะไรที่ติดอยู่บนบอร์ดของเรานะคะหรือว่าอะไรที่น่าสนใจโปสเตอร์อะไรๆก็อาจารย์ก็นำมาลิสต์รวมกันได้นะคะค่ะเริ่มแรกก็คือลิสต์นะคะรายการ m a t e r i a l s ที่อาจารย์คิดว่ามีประโยชน์กับการที่นักเรียนจะฝึกอ่านและเขียนนะคะที่มีอยู่ปัจจุบันแล้วก็ที่ลิสต์ที่สองคือแล้วในมีอยู่ในลิสต์แรกนั้นน่ะนำอะไรมาใช้กับนักเรียนบ้างในปัจจุบันนะคะอย่างเช่นสมมุตินะคะโปสเตอร์อาจารย์ยังไม่ได้นำมาใช้แต่มีอยู่นะคะอย่างนั้นเป็นต้นก็ยังไม่ต้องนำมาในลิสต์ที่สองค่ะค่ะสักห้านาทีดีไหมคะ I give them five minutes l e s l i e Okay, good. And you're um, still really breaking up on this side. Do you want to check with your technical people and ask if they want to reconnect, or are they happy okay. with the connection on your side? Okay. Yeah. Right. I check with them. ตอนนี้เรามีเวลาห้านาทีให้อาจารย์ทำงานกลุ่มนะคะไม่ทราบว่าเราจะ disconnect ไหมคะแล้ว connect ใหม่ค่ะค่ะเราจะสัญญาณจะขาดไปแป๊บหนึ่งนะคะค่ะ The result. สวัสดีค่ะ Good evening, Hello. lovely. Hi. Okay. Can you hear me clearly? Hello. Mm, I can hear you sort of clearly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. That all the resources in our classroom, we have a brochure, leaflet, billboard, newspaper, magazine, and also the cassette tape player. And sometimes we use a CD-ROM for the student, and video, size, labels, advertisement, sticker bumper, e-book for our school now, and right. And we use the internet for the student to find some information. And we use the movie poster, novel, short story, map, song, and we have a book basket in the classroom for the student to read. Something, uh, and most of us always use brochure in our class and leaflet and newspaper because it's easy to bring it into my classroom. And also the movie poster that the student love it so much, and also song in our class. That all the item that we use in our resource, right? Thank you. 
That's a lot. <laughs> I, sus I suspect you're one of the leaders for this project, so uh, we're going to talk about it more at the end of the session, but I invite you next uh, session to bring as many of those examples as you can so that we can mm -hmm. see some of them. Would that be possible? Yep. Okay, I think great. It can do and I, I good. And I really appreciate your um, comments on which kinds of resources were easiest to find, too. So if I understood you correctly, the brochures, the leaflets, the newspapers, and the movie posters are the easiest ones to get a hold of. Uh -huh. Good. Right. And where do you get your newspapers from? Uh, I just buy it from the bookstore. Oh, you buy them. Okay. Uh, right. For myself, because because sometimes I take it from the student, mm -hmm. right? So we cut it off and read it together. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Good. I always Good. Good. Bring, <laughs> right. bring, yeah, bring some sometime examples I, of that <laughs> as well. Sometimes um, I, I read it out from the internet. Uh, off the internet, that's another, right. that's another option. Right. So um, you're particularly well uh, connected, it sounds like, with computers and technology. And I know that we have a number of viewers out there who are not. Um, right. So in addition to buying newspapers or getting them off the internet, um, another idea for getting access to them might be to visit places like uh, hotels. Um, I know okay. that a lot of hotel lobbies have newspapers. And yeah. they, every day, they put out new ones and presumably they throw them away or recycle uh -huh. them at night. So right. um, another way to get them might be to visit places that have a lot okay. of newspapers and ask them to donate them to your school. Um, oh, even right. if it's one day old or a week old or whatever, it's still really valuable English authentic materials, I think. Yeah, thank you for your suggestion. Okay, okay good. Thank you. Those were great. Okay, let's hear from the other side of our yeah. Bangkok. cohort there. Yeah, yeah. Bangkok. Bangkok. Okay, yes. Good morning, Leslie. I'm Supatra Somsuanchai from La Prakau Pitya Home School in Bangkok. Most of our materials is just the same as before. Uh, the chair story, the short story, and novels, poems, songs, movie handbills and posters, and newspaper and magazines. Uh, for the newspaper, we got free copies because we sell newspaper to the students. <laughs> and, <Nice. laughs> and real things, real things. We use real things uh, for the students. And then movie, students' product. This is very interesting because the students uh, like to to look and read uh, uh, their friend's product. And different types of dictionaries, uh, maps and globe, pictures of previous activities, and, and this is their favorite too. The video, the PowerPoint, the wall charts and graphic, and we have uh, a lot of brochures, and uh, this year we have in the internet at school too. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, all. thank you. So <laughs> enough very substantial list. I think you two ladies should be teaching the course. <laughs> so if I may invite you to bring some examples of your student work and some of the materials that you're using in your classroom, especially things that you find you're able to get for free. I really like those ideas because I think those will be the most beneficial, the free and the low-cost things for our viewers who are outside of the studio. Okay. I also really liked what you said about um, using realia and uh, sharing things among friends. And when we talk about realia, again, these can be, th can be things that you go out and buy, but they don't have to be. So um, in my travels in Thailand, um, one of the things I've noticed is that Thailand is a very beautiful and natural country, and the rural schools especially are set out in really amazing places. And one of the things that I see some of the teachers here in Oregon do, Oregon is a natural place as well, is they have students bring things in just from their community and their environment. So students will find as many different kinds of leaves as they can. Um, they'll look for different kinds of uh, stone or soil samples. 
They may bring in items from uh, recycling centers or from their sort of uh, collections at home or from local businesses. So what we're going to try to do over the next five sessions is get really creative with how we think about these resources and what we do with them, especially things that we can identify as being free or low cost so that it's the most beneficial to everybody who's following along with us. Okay, do we need to do a translation or should we move on? Yeah, I think we move on for the moment, right? Okay. All right, we're moving on. Um, what we're moving on to is a set of demonstrations. You gave us a lot of really excellent examples from both of our experienced uh, sets of teachers in Huaqin and Bangkok. Thank you again. That was just really marvelous. What, what we've got here are just a series of ideas. Um, things that don't cost money and can save you time and incorporate English in simple ways in your classroom at the same time. One of the things that I notice in some classrooms when I go and visit is that a lot of time gets taken up with uh, calling roll or figuring out which students are there and which students are absent for the day. So one technique that you see suggested at some of the teacher lesson plan sites or in, in classrooms that I've observed is a, a very simple sign-in sheet. And the teacher has, has no responsibility for this during the actual sign-in. As students come into the classroom, um, and there may be more than one sign-in sheet, they sign themselves in. And rather than using an X or a check mark or something sort of nondescript, they use English. And for each sign-in sheet each week, there's a different theme. So you may notice on my sign-in sheet that I have three students. And I didn't ask them first, so I hope they don't mind. But we have student Manisa, student Naraporn, and student Sorada in alphabetical order. These are, these are some of our fearless leaders at the video conference here. And what we see across the top is uh, five days of school. They go to school on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So right away, I'm using English and days of the week. And you see at the top of the screen in purple that this week's theme is world exploration. We're going to look for all kinds of examples of world exploration in our newspapers, in our brochures, in our leaflets, in our ads, in our realia, in our sign-in sheet. And so when Manisa came to school on Monday, she didn't sign her name. She had to think of a city in the world, and she had to write it in English. So she chose Beijing. When Naraporn came on Monday, she was dreaming of New York. Um, so she wrote NY for New York. And it's OK that she abbreviated it. We'll take English in whatever form the students want to write it. And uh, Sorada was thinking of the West Coast, Los Angeles. Then they all came back to school on Tuesday. Good students. They came on um, every day this week so far. Manisa was thinking of some of her previous diplomatic service, and she wrote DC. Naraporn looked at what the other students had written, and she saw Beijing on the list. And she said, oh, Beijing, that's someplace I'd like to visit too. And she wrote Beijing for Tuesday. And it's OK that she shared an idea from another student. Sorada who hasn't yet been to visit Oregon, was thinking of Eugene, still on the West Coast, and so she wrote Eugene. Same thing again for Wednesday. Um, we see no signature for Nara Porn. She wasn't feeling that well that day. She stayed home. Thursday, the teacher adds a little bit more of a complication. She says, on Thursday, I want you all to write a different city from Africa, because I'm not seeing very many Africa cities yet. So Manisa wrote Cairo, Nara Porn wrote Dakar, Sorada wrote Algiers. Maybe the students are looking at a map on the wall. Maybe they've been skimming the globe. Maybe they've been looking through news or brochures or leaflets. So they're getting ideas about cities all the time. And then on Friday, she chose Europe. OK, so what do you think? Does this kind of system make sense? Yeah, I think that's very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, would you like to explain uh, it in Thai or should I move on? Ajahn Leslie said something to you, right? And she said that 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 she said
ซึ่งจุดประสงค์ก็คือเพื่อที่จะให้นักเรียนเนี่ยนะคะหาข้อมูลจากแหล่งใดๆก็ได้นะคะที่จะเกี่ยวกับซีมนี้แล้วก็ถ้าจําหัวข้อให้แคบลงก็คือให้นักเรียนแต่ละคนเนี่ยไซน์อินว่าในวันที่สมมุติจะของเราเนี่ยเขามีคลาสอาจจะไม่ครบ5วันอย่างที่อาจารย์โชว์ให้ดูวันที่เขามีคลาสภาษาอังกฤษเนี่ยเขาสนใจอยากจะ explore เมืองไหนนะค้นหาข้อมูลของเมืองไหนเป็นพิเศษนะคะก็ให้เขาแผนให้เขาเขียนลงมานะคะอย่างนักเรียนคนแรกนะคะก็วันจันทร์บอกว่าสนใจเบจิงปักกิ่งนะคะซึ่งอาจารย์บอกว่าไซนินชีตเนี่ยแม้แต่วันนะคะมันเดย์ทิวสเดย์อะไรพวกนั้นก็เขียนภาษาอังกฤษอันนั้นก็เป็นให้เด็กได้ expose กับการใช้ภาษาจริงๆนะคะวันการเรียนรู้วันในภาษาอังกฤษนะคะไม่ใช่ท่องอย่างเดียวใช่ไหมคะได้เห็นจริงแล้วก็ชื่อเขียนเป็นภาษาอังกฤษนะคะแล้วก็ชื่อเมืองเหมือนกันนะคะแล้วก็ชื่อเมืองอาจจะมีทั้งเป็นตัวเต็มตัวย่อนะคะอย่างคนที่สองบอกว่าไปนิวยอร์กก็เขียน NY เขาก็จะได้รู้ว่า,ามีตัวย่อนิวยอร์กว่า NY นะจะได้รู้นะคะเรียนรู้ภาษาที่ใช้จริงนะคะแล้วก็ให้ลงไปตามความสนใจนี่พอมาถึงอ,อ,อาจจะมีการว่ามาแชร์ข้อมูลก็ได้เพราะว่านาราพรเกิดเห็นมานิสาว่าวันจันทร์นี่ไป explore เบจิงก็อยากจะรู้มั่งเรื่องเมืองปักกิ่งก็พอวันอังคารก็ลงเมืองปักกิ่งก็อันนี้ก็มีข้อมูลแชร์กันได้นะฮะแล้วพอวันพฤหัสอาจารย์ก็อาจจะกําหนดหัวข้อให้สเปซิฟิกลงไปว่าขอจากทวีปแอฟริกาทั้งสามทั้งทั้งนักเรียนทั้งหมดนะหรือว่าวันศุกร์จากทวีปยุโรปทั้งหมดนะฮะอันนี้ก็เป็นซีมที่พยายามให้กําหนดหัวข้อกว้างให้ก่อนแล้วก็หัวข้อย่อยที่นักเรียนสนใจก็ให้เลือกเองนะคะและหาข้อมูลค่ะก็อยู่ในซีมเดียวกัน Yes over to you Leslie Thank you Okay great So some of the advantages of a system like this are that um, we're giving students choices um, we're sneaking some English in there indirectly but directly they're actually using the English in an authentic way um, the concept of world exploration is tied to some kind of curriculum or thematic topic that's happening in the classroom um, and it encourages them to be real language users let's look at another example this is an example of a wall that students built and they were studying um, something about the brain uh, in their in their class so the one of the concepts in their book was uh, thinking and parts of the brain and it was kind of a science um, topic or theme and so the teacher just used just paper paper and markers and the students uh, built some puzzles and some interactive questions and wrote some information and over a period of time say one week um, built a science wall so the nice thing about this is that it combines both content with the target language um, it is student generated it is low cost and students when they're sort of looking up and gazing around the classroom or they're walking around or they're just thinking um, have an opportunity to be exposed again to to language both directly and indirectly okay okay another wall example this is an, this is an example from a classroom where um, as part of their world exploration themes they were studying the rainforest in South America and again this is a, a wall item that students built over a period of time something like one to two weeks and there's a vocabulary section you can see there's a vocabulary column um, students were asked to predict it was a kind of a game what do you think a canopy is what do you think an ecosystem is what do you think a habitat is um, then they had an opportunity to look it up in a dictionary um, an encyclopedia through uh, booklets, through leaflets, through whatever their resources may be. Uh, they drew pictures about it because a lot of our students are very visual learners or, or kinesthetic learners and benefit from uh, drawing about it. And then there's um, a place at the end where they wrote sentences about it. And this is, again, something you could do as a whole class. You could do it as groups. Um, it's very easy. It's very low cost. Um, if you're having students work in groups, groups that finish first can go and work on their wall their wall projects um, so they can kind of take turns and build it up over time one more wall project this is a nice example from an older set of students and they're celebrating things that they did during a holiday so places that we visited during spring break so they brought in their own 
maps and brochures, and they did some of their own writing, some of their own drawing, and pinned things up so that they could share with each other what they'd been doing. Okay, before we move on to the next one, do you want to sum up yes, the, the waltz things just briefly? Right. Yeah. ก็อย่างไซน์อินชีนะคะก็เป็นอย่างนึงคือเป็นรีซอสอย่างหนึ่งนะคะที่อาจารย์เลสลีย์บอกว่าถ้าทําขึ้นมาเนี่ยแล้
ญญาณขาดสัญญาณอินอะบับเบิลออฟอังกฤษหรืออะคักคูนออฟอังกฤษเขาคอนสแตนต์ลีสระวนเดียบไปและเขาสนใจกับมันเพราะเขาเจเนเรตอะไรของพวกมันเองและเลือกสิ่งที่เขาจะต้องการที่จะเห็นในห้องเรียนของพวกเขาโอเคดังนั้นไม่เพียงพื้นที่และประตูและประตูและประตูและประตูและประตูและประตูและประตูและประตูและประตูและประตูและประตูและประตูและประตูและประตูและประตูและประตูและประตูและประตูและประตูและประตูและประตูและประตู Um, so again, this idea of using walls and ceilings and windows and just little tiny corners. So this is a nice example of um, a classroom that has one listening center. It's got a very simple set of audio cassettes and a player, and it sits on a, just a regular student desk. And it's got some written materials, some photocopied stories underneath that students can read along. And so when students finish their work early, or if the teacher is on a rotation, rotating students through different projects. Um, they can come over to the listening center and put the headphones on, and listen to things of their choice. So we've got ceilings, we've got corners. Um, here's another corner. Uh, we saw a science wall before. This is a, a math corner. It's not only got things happening up on the wall with posters and student work and things that they've made. She's got some manipulatives here as well, and so um, things for telling time, um, numeracy games. Things that students, if they have free time, or if they finish early, or you're again rotating people through centers, they can get the materials out and work with them in English around math topics. She had puzzles, she had problem-solving games, things with very simple English um, that involved numbers. Math is a great um, topic for that, and math is all around us in our lives. We see uh, temperatures here, we see graphs and things for counting. Um, there's just a lot happening over here in this math corner. Uh, before we move on to mini libraries, maybe let's sum up corners and ceilings. Does that sound good? Okay. Yeah, I've talked uh, about the uh, windows using windows already. Okay. Ka. Right. อีกแหล่งนึงนะคะที่อาจารย์สามารถที่จะ show resource ได้คือ ceilings ค่ะคือห้อยโปสเตอร์เล็กๆมาจากเพดานนะคะซึ่งอันนี้นี่เป็นก็เป็นภาพนกใน science class นะคะที่เมื่อกี้อาจารย์ได้โชว์ตารางเรนฟอเรสให้ดูนะคะคุณจอชบอกคือนกโชคเนจาก South Africa นะคะเป็นนกที่มีสีสวยงามมากแล้วก็มีมุมอันนี้เราก็คงเรามีกันอยู่แล้วใช่ไหมคะในโรงเรียนในห้องเรียนของเรามุมอันนี้เป็นมุม listening นะคะมีเทปให้เด็กฟังแล้วก็มีหนังสือให้นะคะอาจจะเป็นเทปสคริปต์หรือว่าหนังสือให้อ่านเพิ่มเติมด้วยแล้วก็อีกมุมหนึ่งนะคะก็คือมุม math นะคะคณิตศาสตร์ซึ่งอาจจะเป็นพัซเซิลนะคะปัญหาคณิตศาสตร์หรือว่ามีโชว์เกี่ยวกับเรื่องอุณหภูมิเป็นกราฟเป็นอะไรอย่างนั้นนะคะก็คือทําให้เป็นภาษาอังกฤษนะคะเพื่อที่จะน่าสนใจค่ะแล้วก็ค่ะก็ก็คอนเนอร์กับซีลิงส์นะคะค่ะ over to you Leslie thank you okay great okay so in addition to those kinds of surfaces um, we can also create uh, charts Um, we can tie charts into things like book reports. Um, so just as we had the self sign-in sheet, we can have students self-monitoring their reading and the kinds of materials that we're in, that they choose to interact with. So it could be not only books that we've read; it could be stories we've listened to, um, items that we've contributed to the science wall or the math corner. But the idea here is that students take responsibility for their own learning. And their own use of the language. So they sign themselves in. They uh, they indicate on the graphs what kind of books they've done, or they track their own progress. Um, and this is an example of uh, a book book tracking device, a very simple chart um, tied to a little mini library. And this particular mini library was purchased, as you can see. 
from Scholastic, but I've also seen some very nice examples of libraries of stories that were photocopied or that were students wrote and illustrated themselves. Um, a couple of the teachers mentioned that students like to listen to songs. I've seen students take songs that they enjoy listening to and build those into books. They write the lyrics or they illustrate the lyrics and they place those song books into their mini class libraries as well. So again, um, although some schools um, with us and who are following along may have resources to purchase these kinds of materials, what we really want to be thinking about are ways that we can generate them ourselves um, and even have our students create them and build them up over time. So we've got many libraries. We've got self-tracking for things like book reports. A number of the teachers who we just talked to, men, both teachers mentioned um, that they bring newspapers in. Here's an example of a, just a table. Um, anytime the teacher gets a fresh batch of newspapers, she puts them out. She has enough of them. She says, take one to read on your own. You can read it in class. You can take it to lunch. You can take it home. We might use them to cut them up for projects. Um, it's a very, uh, sounds like even for Thailand, or also for Thailand, it's an easy resource to get a hold of, um, one that you can make available and keep fresh in your classroom. Newspapers have pictures, they have text, they have games, they have crossword puzzles, they have comics, they just, they're really rich resources of lots of language exposure. Okay, let's look at one more kind of resource before we summarize and translate. Um, it's also possible if you aren't able to put a lot up on your walls or your ceilings and that sort of thing to have mobile resources, um, collections of resources that uh, you literally put on wheels. Um, so here are a couple of examples of resource carts. Um, this one has um, lots and lots of books. They're just sort of chunked on there. Um, students can access them. They can check them out. Again, a, a self-checkout system. So you sign yourself in. Um, you monitor your own reading, your own use of resources, and you can check your books in and out yourself. Um, this cart over here on the other side has resources labeled according to genre. So we have science resources, we have fiction, we have nonfiction, um, another one with fiction. So um, just very simple, rolling along carts with things that the, the busy English teacher can take up and down the halls with her from class to class. So before we move on to others, let's sum up. We've got uh, mini library, we've got tabletops and newspapers, and we've got uh, mobile units that contain resources. Over to you, Nara Porn. Thank you. Ajahn um, can show resource three mini library. Ajahn can recommend that when you take the small books, มาวางไว้ให้นักเรียนของเราแล้วในมุมหนึ่งเนี่ยก็อาจจะทำชาร์ตนะคะชาร์ตเป็นชื่อเด็กนะ,ะชื่อนักเรียนแล้วก็ให้เขามาลงสมมติว่าถ้าเขาหยิบเล่มไหนไปอ่านเนี่ยเขาก็ลงชื่อนะคะคือเขาจะเขียนชื่อหนังสือนะคะติ๊กว่าตรงที่ชื่อเขาอะค่ะติ๊กว่าเขาได้ได้นำเล่มนี้ไปอ่านแล้วนะคะแล้วก็สำหรับเชเบิลท็อปนะคะก็อาจารย์ก็แนะนําว่าให้เอาหนังสือพิมพ์นะคะมาวางไว้ซึ่งของเราก็อาจจะไม่ใช่หนังสือพิมพ์วันนี้ก็ได้หนังสือพิมพ์ของสามวันที่แล้วสัปดาห์ที่แล้วอย่างที่อาจารย์แนะนําว่าให้ไปขอตามโรงแรมหรือตามอะไรนะซึ่งอาจารย์เน้นว่าไม่ควรจะเสียเงินซื้อนะคะอะไรที่ได้หาได้ขอได้นะคะขอความดุครอได้ก็ขอมาซึ่งอันนี้เนี่ยเราก็อาจจะทําให้ง่ายลงก็อาจจะเป็นตัดอย่างที่เมื่อกี้อาจารย์ทางหัวหินบอกนะคะตัดเป็นคลิปเป็นนิวส์คลิปนะคะแล้วก็รวมไว้เป็นหมวดหมู่นะคะว่าเป็นข่าวเกี่ยวกับด้านไหน politics ด้านอะไรอย่างนั้นก็ได้แล้วก็อันสุดท้ายก็คาร์ดนะคะอันนี้ก็คือเคลื่อนที่ได้นะคะจัดหมวดหมู่หนังสือนะคะอาจจะอย่างนี้แบ่งตามลักษณะของของของภาษานะคะอย่างเช่นมีหนังสือเกี่ยวกับ science หนังสือเกี่ยวกับ fiction นะคะหนังสือเกี่ยวกับ non fiction นะคะค่ะเรื่องแต่งเรื่องจริงอะไรอย่างนั้นนะคะอาจจะเป็นการ์ตูนนะคะเรามี Sunday Comics ใช่ไหมคะที่แถมมาจากกับมากับ newspapers ก็มาจะใส่ได้ในคะ่ะซึ่งนี้ก็ย้ายไปตามห้องเรียนต่างๆได้ซึ่งจริงๆอันนี้เมื่อกี้อาจารย์สุภัตราจากทางนี้ก็กรุงเทพก็พูดถึง book basket ใช่ไหมคะค่ะเออ Yeah, and one of the lastly, one of our teachers here has just mentioned book basket. I think it's similar to the cards, right? Yeah, that is mobile. Yeah, that's that's mm -hmm. that's a nice addition. Book baskets too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
And as for Good. the yeah, as for the mini library, I just would like to show three the mini books you know I've got from University of Oregon's museum. Yeah, and so you can we Good. can add that to the class. Yeah, reading corner, right? Hey, excellent! You, you came you came prepared. <laughs> Okay, um, another uh, type of resource that the teachers um, tonight or this morning mentioned um, is the idea of realia, um, also called manipulative, so actual things that you can uh, move with your hands or touch and, and work with. Um, in, the, in American English, we have this uh, word or this concept we call tinkering. And tinkering is this idea of taking odds and ends or recycled parts or what some people might think of as junk and putting them together in interesting ways. And so there are some very nice lesson plans. Um, if you see the URL down at the bottom of the screen, um, this is, these are where these particular pictures and um, the specific lesson plans came from. But there are some ideas for things like uh, building bridges, building robots, um, building racers, uh, cars, so having uh, car contests or, or car or building contests made out of recycled items. Um, a solar cooker also made out of recycled items. And so um, there's a lot that you can do with things that students just find literally in the junk piles or in um, their maybe sitting around their homes or their communities and put them together on a, a kind of manipulatives table. I think it's important to, um, and we've talked before about trying to accommodate different learning styles and individualized preferences. Um, so making opportunities for students to engage with the language both through traditional reading and, and writing and listening and speaking, but also by doing, whether it's at the math corner or the science wall or um, the grass or the recycled racer and then labeling the parts and explaining about it to another colleague or classmate, as the case may be. So recycled parts um, is where we'll end with that set of demonstrations. And what I'd like to invite you to do is move into our second activity, which is a, a brainstorming session. Um, you made lists of things that you already have. Um, maybe we looked at some new ideas just now in the demonstrations. Please get back into your groups, whether you're in Huayin or Bangkok, or following along with us in Eric centers and schools and other places outside of our studio. And in your groups, make a list of all the possible resources that you would now like to look for in your community. So we're brainstorming here. Um, different groups are going to come up with different ideas. So some of you may say, gosh, I'd really like to get more newspapers. I'm going to go to the hotels. I'd really like to get more leaflets, but I don't know how. I'd like to build up my manipulatives or my realia collections. Um, I'd sure like to get more songs. What is it that you're looking for? What would you like to try to introduce into your classroom? And then be thinking about ways you might look for them and some examples that you might bring to the next session. We're going to talk more about how we can exchange not only ideas, but actual examples of these things as well. OK, not our point. Is that clear? Over to you. Yeah, thank you. Reading, writing materials. อ่ามื้อกี้ที่อาจารย์มีอยู่ใช่มั้ยคะอันนี้ไม่ใช่แล้วที่อาจารย์คิดว่าน่าจะหาได้ในในชุมชนในอำเภอในจังหวัดหร
Yes, I can. Um, it's intermittent. I'll let you know if I, I can't hear you at all. Okay. So in my group, we uh, collect something about materials brainstorming that we can bring. We can ask students, for example, newspaper, leaflet, brochure, seashells, because the the beaches, so I can ask students to bring seashells, tickets, a movie review, concert mm -hmm. ticket, or songs from the magazines, coffee cups, or the placemat when you go to McDonald or KFC. Thank you. Oh, those are great ideas. Very creative. Thank you for sharing. Well, that's just terrific. So seashells from your local environment. I bet you'll find a lot of those. Uh, tickets, movie reviews, songs, um, coffee cups, placemats. Um, that could be a lot of fun. You could have a whole restaurant collection corner um, with menus and all kinds of things going on there. Lots of English on those. Very cool. All right. Thank you. Nice contribution. All right. How about the other group? Uh, okay. Yeah. At the back row, please. Good morning. Uh, for, for my group, uh, I think next week, uh, I, I will take about brochure from my district uh, movie poster and I, I I think pictures. Um, picture about uh, my district, um, something like this, and magazine for district magazine. Um, it's just just enough for me, I think. I, I will try. I will try to to find uh, to find that I, I I said to you about interesting brochure uh, in in our districts. Uh -huh. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Can't think of poetry. We think of very traditional rhyming sorts of schemes. Um, or traditional templates, but newspapers can yield a lot of interesting poetry as well. So what I did was took the same newspaper, <coughs> excuse me, and looked for headlines, and I made a headline poem. I just cut out a series of headlines that seemed to kind of go together. And let's see if you can guess what my topic is. Um, this is the word spotlight. Spotlight. Leslie's teammates provide the spark. Go, Leslie. That was really lucky I found my name. Spotlight. Leslie's teammates provide the spark. Stitchless ball gets mixed reviews. Breaks up. Needs quick fix to stay alive. Makes fast progress after surgery. Survives rocky road. So that's an example of a headline poem. We'll talk more, um, and actually if you go to the supporting website, you can see the lesson plan for that and ideas about how to use it. But one more idea for cutting up your newspaper and uh, squeezing a little poetry and creativity out of it. Uh, an example from, also from newspapers, and in a story format, um, is this one which I like very much. It's uh, from a, a book, also from uh, Scholastic. It's very inexpensive. It's called uh, The Stinky Cheese Man and Other Fairly Stupid Tales. So we think of uh, fairy tales as being sort of traditional ways of learning about a culture or telling a story. I mean, these are modern, modern tales, and they're um, intended to be silly and to be entertaining. So this is an example of um, a revised version of Jack and the Beanstalk. You know the giant from Jack and the Beanstalk? Does everyone know the giant? Raise your hand if you know the giant and the Jack and the Beanstalk story. Okay, I see some hands. All right, well, the giant in the, in the story, in this fairy tale, 
he himself is fairly stupid. He's not very bright. And Jack steals things from him quite successfully and gets very rich. Well, the giant wants to write his own story, so he went to the newspaper or the fairy tales, and he cut them up, and he put them together. And his story goes something like, the end of the evil stepmother said, I'll huff and puff and give you three wishes. The beast changed into seven dwarfs happily ever after, for a spell had been cast by a wicked witch once upon a time. So this is an example of a, a story, cutting up parts of other stories or cutting up parts from the newspaper and recasting it in a creative way, in a fun way, in a silly way, um, to make something new. Just some ideas. Other ideas for things that you can generate with your students are things like uh, student newspapers or student newsletters. This is an example from our local language center. And one thing that our local language center likes to do is exchange newsletters with other language centers. So if one school makes an interesting newsletter, it might make a few extra copies and exchange them with a newsletter from another school. So this is something that you could arrange to do within your own groups here um, as part of this project. If one of your ideas is to create student materials in the form of a newsletter or poems or whatever it turns out to be, exchanging authentic materials between classes or between schools is also a really nice way to expose students and to share their language use with each other. All right, so if you'd like more ideas about this, um, I invite you to go to the website. We have some examples of things like um, news linking newspapers and maps together, using newspapers in creative ways, um, examples of fiction and nonfiction, ideas for imagine I am kinds of first person writing. It could be diary journals, it could be postcards, it could be stories. Um, uh, creative writing, remember you mentioned you were using songs. Um, building timelines, if you'd like to know more about how to build a timeline. Collages, things like graphs. And what we have on the PowerPoint slide, if I can get it to come back up, there it is, <laughs> um, is an example of a, a graph that some students made. So you mentioned bringing in seashells, collecting different kinds of seashells. This class was doing a community exploration theme, and they were taking an inventory of animals in their neighborhood. So we have squirrels, we have ladybugs, red robin birds, bluebirds, and butterflies. And for one week, the students uh, kept a journal, and they went out in the community, and every day, every time they saw a squirrel or a butterfly or a red bird, they would make a little mark. And they brought their data, they brought their numbers, back to the classroom and they worked in groups and they put their data together and they made a graph. They made this graph. It's a very nice bar chart. Um, it's got English on it. It's got graphing. It involves critical thinking skills, data collection. This is a really marvelous example of integrated skills and critical thinking skills um, in visual literacy and English. I um, just a very simple, inexpensive, um, but interactive kind of activity with students. Uh, here's an example of a map that I got off the internet. And if I were to use this map, I might uh, go back to my newspaper stories and find where Phoenix is and find where Mexico is and find where Indonesia is. And maybe the students make marks on their maps, either at their tables or up on the wall and sort of track their stories over time. So that's an example of integrating a free kind of black and white resource and image. I got this one from the internet. You could get them from other places. Um, again, linking it back to newspapers and themes in your curriculum. If you'd like to see more about these, um, you can go to our supporting website. It's tiuo.uoregon.edu, and this is session six. What I'd like to invite you to do for next time is think back on our second activity that we just went through and bring ideas from your classroom, from your materials, from your texts from your curriculum, what are some topics for which you would like to build resource sets over the next five sessions? Number two, start to collect those resources. Go to the hotels, go to 
um, the beach, get your seashells, get your tickets, get your movie posters, get enough for yourself, and please get extras, and bring your extras to the next four sessions, and we're going to do something called a swap, an exchange. Over the next four sessions, we're going to bring as many extra materials, extra sets of materials as we can to the sessions, and after each session, while you're wrapping things up and maybe getting a bite to eat or visiting a little bit, put your extra sets of resources out on the um, table somewhere in your studios in Joaquin and Bangkok or at your local centers where you're working and exchange things. And in this way, no one of us has to do all the work of building the resource sets. We can bring things and share them with each other and help quickly build up each other's resource collections. So this is called a swap shop. It's an exchange, and it's something that um, Ajarn Naraporn and Ajarn Suchada and Kuhn George are going to talk to you more at length about and come to some kind of agreement for the process you'd like to use for this. And I think that brings us to the end of our session. I'm happy to take a few questions or provide any additional clarification that people might need. Naraporn? Yeah, thank you. ค่ะอาจารย์ก็ได้ให้ดูตัวอย่างนะคะที่ไปเดโมสเตรชั่นทรูนะคะในภายใต้หัวข้อบอกเอ็กซ์เพรสชั่นสี่เนี่ยตั
ม a t e r i a l s นะคะเอ่อ resource ต่างๆแปลกๆนะคะอย่างเมื่อกี้ท่านอาจารย์บอกว่านำมีท่านหนึ่งจะนำเปลือหอยมารูปแบบต่างๆนั้นก็ได้นะคะแต่ก็ต้องดูนิดนึงนะคะอาจารย์ก็เป็นทรัพยากรธรรมชาตินะคะอาจารย์ค่ะก็ถ้าใครนำมามากที่สุดนะคะเดี๋ยวมีรางวัลค่ะนะคะมีมินิบุ๊กซี่ให้นะคะทั้งเซตเลยให้ไปนะอันนี้ของทางทางกรุงเทพและทางโหหินนะคะมีอย่างละหนึ่งรางวัลค่ะสำหรับท่านที่นำเซตของ materials มามากที่สุด uh, I offer them a prize for those who uh, are going to bring most of the materials for next time What about that Leslie Oh I like that Oh that's a good idea so we can have a kind of a, a competition I won't call it a competition but an incentive an incentive very nice Okay that's a great idea Good, and I, you know, I'd welcome feedback if there are um, things that you're especially wanting to find or um, other ideas that you'd like to try to explore. Um, as usual, your suggestions are welcome. So, I think uh, that brings us to the end. Is that right? Yeah, uh, I think we have one question from the floor from Bangkok sure. side. Would you mind? Okay. Okay. Not at all. ค่ะอาจารย์ที่มีคำถามเชิญเลยค่ะกดไม่ Yes, please. Yes. Hi. Good morning, Miss Leslie. My name is Raymond, and I'm a foreign teacher from Wing Chidi w i t a y a School up north. The topic is really great, by the way. And but I hope we can integrate two more words to the definition of literacy, which means understanding and comprehension, like the ability to understand and comprehend what is being read, written, what is being heard and spoken. And this, our mm -hmm. school is um, an English resource instruction center, which means we have tons and lots of res wonderful resources, really. But um, I suppose the, the more appropriate question for me would be, how can we um, check or how can we know if these wonderful and creative resources are fully understood, and if the students can really understand these resources? Are there any techniques to know such? Okay, I'm sorry. I, I think I caught most of what you said. We we just don't have very good quality sound tonight. So if I understand your uh, your comment, I I agree with uh, your additions to the literacy um, definition of uh, understanding and comprehension. And um, I think there I think your question was is um, how do we assess or how do we measure the degree to which our students understand the materials that we're making available to them? Exactly. And I think um, this is an important assessment question. And there are times in the classroom when you are monitoring assessment very closely. Um, again, I think we're very fortunate to have uh, in our studio so many teachers with um, a really wide array of resources that are already available to them. And you can uh, continue to raise these points and uh, provide examples. I know we're also in indirect communication with a lot of schools who don't. So these are important things to um, talk through. I think. When we're talking about a resource-rich classroom, there may be times uh, when it's appropriate to formatively or and or summatively evaluate a student's comprehension. And you as the lead teacher are going to have to be the decision maker for that. Um, there are times uh, in the classroom, particularly when students are making choices, when it's not so much the percentage of how much they understood. It, it may be a difficult thing to measure. It's more, did they have a positive interaction with the language? Was it a positive interaction? Are they motivated? Were they engaged? Did they enjoy it? Um, and in those kinds of cases, what you may rely more heavily on are reflective or self-evaluation kinds of tools, which are also very important in the learning process, as we know. Um, that would be my, my quick answer to what is obviously a very uh, complex question or comment. All right. Thank you very much, Leslie. Yeah. So we are okay. approaching. Do, yeah. we have, uh, do we have any other questions from Hua Hin or, or others? Very clear and creative and be set to bring extras to the class next time. Okay. Yeah, please bring extras. and um. I limited it a little bit when I said reading and writing materials, and many of you listed those kinds of materials, but I also liked um, the realia kinds of items that you talked about as well, so the, the seashells and uh, um, placemats, and let's interpret that in as wide as possible 
um, kind of framework. And let's see what comes in. Um, my guess is that you will inspire each other to all kinds of creativity based on what I saw here tonight. OK. Well, can, shall I say thank you? Yeah. Thank you. We have to say thank okay, you. OK, thank you, Kokunka. Thank you very much. Um, I enjoyed working with you tonight, as always. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to thank you all for coming both to our live session and to those of you who followed along out in um, other areas. I look forward to more work with you next session, just two weeks away. If yeah. you want to communicate with me, you're welcome to do so via the website on our contact form or by email. I'm always happy to hear from you. So thank you very much and wishing you all a pleasant day.